So we're live, huh? Well, hello, Bingo. Welcome back to Every Man Has a Story. I've got my new friend Mark here. And uh, Mark, you just arrived in the Philippines, right? Sure did. It is now Thursday. I've been here Monday since about 2 p.m. Wow. Yeah. And it's so what's first impressions? First impressions, um, uh, it was kind of what I expected. Everything was kind of what I expected because um, COVID been here uh, locked in the house for the last two years waiting to get here. So all I've been doing is watching every single YouTube video that I can possibly watch. So I kind of knew what to expect a bit. There's a little, a few little surprises, you know, but uh, nothing major. And where are you from in the States? Uh, originally from New York, um, up state New York, small town of Phoenix. It's a village actually, yeah. whole, like 1,100 people. Um, then from there, I joined the military and ran off, traveled the world, went a whole bunch of places. And uh, so, what did you do in the military? What I do in the yeah, military? What was your like uh, rating or rank or special? Um, I was a sergeant first class, oh. um, and uh, I did 24 years. 24 years. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was. Th I was. Look, I, I loved it. It was a blast. Every minute of it was enjoyable. So in the army, right? Yeah. Um, in did a way, you, you know, I miss. Did you go to Afghanistan, or Iraq, or anywhere? Um, I've been over to. Um, I, I was in Desert Storm. Uh, oh. The first one, I was in the the second one. I was. Um, I didn't go overseas. Uh, actually, I was I was a, a liaison to a reserve unit, so and they were from uh, New York City, so uh, we went um, to New Jersey and basically hung out in New Jersey for a while, um, just prepping the, the the units that were going through to go overseas. Yeah. We would go and uh, make sure that their equipment was was serviceable, you know, before going over there, yeah. you know. Well, how did you, uh, when did you come up with the idea of uh, moving to the Philippines? Because um, I kind of stumbled upon it. It was, um, I, I know I wanted to travel overseas and I wanted, uh, I wanted to do a lot of traveling. And, you know, like I just started researching, you know, uh, places to go that are affordable, that you can, you know, as uh, on, on my income, you know, where can I go and, and afford to live? And, and enjoy it and so um it came down to a, a, a few different places and the original thought was okay I've, I've been to i've obviously seen america mm -hmm. i've been all over europe because of um the military i've seen some of southwest asia don't know if i want to go back there again but you know mm -hmm. um the um i wanted to see southeast asia and i and south america so the next thing was, okay, find the places that you can afford. Well, most places on my income, you can. Um, but uh, the Philippines, I just, it drew me because of, first of all, people speak English. Yeah, that's big. That's huge. So, you know, that one's big. And then the people, you know, like from all I've uh, read about and, and thing, you know, videos that I've watched and... Uh, you know, um, all the different vloggers that I've watched. Um, everyone has just talked about how great the Philippine people are. It's and friendly. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, that, that right there is kind of what drew me there. So I'm going to stay here for as long as I, I can and visit. This will be my home base. And I'll go to, you know, visit where, you know, Vietnam, Cambodia, Indonesia, um, you know, you name it. Mm. And until I exhaust that, and then maybe years down the road, I'll probably go to Belize um, and stay there because, again, they speak English, mm. and I'll see all of South America. Which because it, it's odd, my uh, my family originates from from South America, from Guyana. Oh wow! I've never been there, <laughs> you know. So mm. so I've got to go and see that. I've never even been to Mexico. You know, um, but I know that's central. It's not South America, but. Well, so you, yeah. you, you jumped off, you know, both feet in. You came here, you yeah. got a house, you, got a, you rented a motorbike. I mean, you're ready to, to make a life here, right? Yeah, things have been clicking pretty quickly. Um, There's a lot of guys I've been meeting recently are just checking things out for a couple of weeks, put a toe in the water, see what it's like, and then mm -hmm. maybe come back and stay. But you've decided, you know, you're here and you're going to stay. Yeah. Are you going to do the, um, the SSRV visa because you're a military? I, I will, yes. Yeah, that I saves will. you a lot of money. 
Yeah, um, yeah I'll definitely do that. Um, as a matter of fact, tomorrow, I mean, I've only been here a couple days. Mm. I'm thinking tomorrow I'm going to go to immigration and do my extension already. Get that out of the way if, if it's possible. And, um, you know, I, I can talk to you about it and ask, like, what the requirements are. What do I need to bring in things? Your but passport. <laughs> that's it? Your passport. They're not going to ask you for your health insurance. They're not going to ask you for COVID tests, none of that stuff. You Great. Know, once you go down there, like, I've, I've been renewing mine for over three years. Uh -huh. And you just go down there with your passport and uh -huh. say, they give you a little form to fill out. And the um, security guard out front will actually help you fill the form out if you have any trouble with it. It's just oh, one great. page. And um, put your address where you're living. And yeah. you pay your, I think it's like 35 bucks for one month. Mm -hmm. And you can do one month, two month, or six months. I'll do six. Yeah, do six I'm months. Make do it easy on yourself. Long as I, I'll do six years if they let me. But, yeah. but uh, you know. yeah, it's really easy. They're very nice down there. So yeah, that, that's, that's the next step. Since I've been here, like I said, I've only been here a few days. And... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like day one obviously was just sleep. You know, that, that flight, um, that's, that's a story that I will not get into on this video. You want to interview me for another video on my trip to get here? That one no, was... No, tell us just a little bit. Something. Tell us a little bit what it was like. Because a lot of guys are, are at home waiting to come here and they want to know, is it easy? Is it hard? Is it, did you have uh, um, any problems? It's yes and yes. It's easy and it's hard. It's easy. If you, um, if you are proactive and you use your head and you do your research and you, you know, uh, do what you get, research all you can. And I was, but then I kind of stopped, I guess. Um, I had a lot of things that I needed to take care of in the United States. So when it came down to it and I was ready to pull the trigger and go, it was a last minute thing. Mm. Instead of saying, okay, I'm gonna get my ticket and travel in a month. No, this was, I'm getting my ticket and I'm gonna travel in three days. Oh, wow. So you know that's gonna cost you a lot more money. Yeah. So rather than getting a, a through flight to the Philippines, it was much cheaper. It was about a third of the price at that time to go to Thailand first. Hmm. So I went to Thailand and, um, you know, I, I went so travel. You had to do the Thai pass and everything to get in there, right? Yes, yeah. and uh, again, no research. <laughs> didn't know about the tie pass and that was um so i showed up in uh new york to i flew on fin air because i had to go to uh they flew me from new york to uh helsinki mm -hmm. wow and um so when i went to new york and i went to fin air they said you need a tie pass and i said what's that you know and uh, i knew about the phil Go pass ahead. or whatever i had to yeah. get for that i got yeah. that um, didn't know about a requirement for the Thai pass, which again, it's my fault, should have researched it. And I was panicking because okay. now it's close to when I've got to actually get on, get on the plane. And, uh, and the, the, the woman at the counter said, look, you can go get online right now, go register. It takes an hour or two and they will give you a response back. I'm like, uh, my flight's going to leave in an hour. <laughs> You know, I was panicking. I was panicking. I got online. I'm registering and I'm just staring at my phone the whole time. You know, please, you know, let this come through on my email and get that QR code and um, waiting and waiting and waiting. One thing that saved my bacon was that the flight was delayed. Oh. The flight was delayed an hour. And I, I said, oh, thank God, the flight's delayed. That, that's a little bit of a reprieve from the governor. And um, so, um, anyway, uh, finally, flight got there. They're boarding, still no QR code. I thought, oh my God, this is not gonna end it's well. It's gonna be nerve wracking. It was, it was absolutely nerve wracking. I had not been that stressed in years and years because I didn't know what to do. I would have lost all the money that I spent on my tickets, they're non refundable, hotels, you know, um, in, in two, three different places. You know, it, it was a lot, you know, and um, like, uh, yeah, I, can, I can lose the money and it's not going to kill me, but nobody likes doing that. Yeah. Um, and I would have had to fly back from New York or, or wait. I'm sorry. I would have had to reschedule everything. And um, I, I would have been in the airport for another 24 hours trying to reschedule everything and get all the work that I had done to get here in the first place would have had to redo. So anyway... Um, everyone got on the plane and they're about to close the door. Still no QR pass. I I'm about to break down. I have a nervous <laughs> breakdown, you know. 
And uh, I thought, well, you know, this is going to happen. I'm going to go to the bar over here and get drunk. Um, but uh, just like as the last person was going through the door, my email popped up and there's the QR code. Mm -hmm. And so I got the QR code at the last second, last person on the plane, jumped on the plane and, you know, the, the, the thing, you know, another thing that was kind of not good about that was that uh, now my luggage was not checked all the way through. Oh. So I had to fly from New York to Helsinki and I had to pick up my baggage and recheck it. So now with that, you know, long flights, yeah. land there, got to pick up my bags, recheck it. And then they said, um, yeah, uh, we only can take one bag, which I flew with two. So I have to pay for the extra bag. And then one of them was overweight. So you're talking about like hundreds of dollars in charges that I wasn't expecting. Again, my fault, my mm. fault, you know. And then a 14 hour layover, <laughs> that, was, that was fun, that was fun. What did you do with the 14 hours? Just stay at the airport or did you try and find out? Oh, I stayed at the airport. I was taking no chances, no chances. I stayed at the airport. But I will say this though, um, for anyone that's planning on flying to Helsinki, or whatever, beautiful airport, beautiful. They've got um, couches everywhere that you can sleep on and you can get like, they give you a blanket and a pillow. Really? Yeah, it was it was incredible. Huh. I've never seen anything like that. You no, know, Finland's supposed to be like the happiest country in the world. I read that somewhere. It, it looked like everyone was happy there and they gave me a blanket, I was happy. I can That's tell you nice. that. Wow. It was, I wasn't happy paying the charges I had to pay, but yeah. you know. Uh, you know, again, my fault, you know, uh, so I can't. So from Helsinki, you flew to the, to the Philippines? Hel no, Helsinki, from Helsinki to Thailand. Okay. Again, because it was cheaper. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I went from, from Washington, D.C. To, to JFK, to New York, to Helsinki, to Thailand, $1,200. It was $1,200. I thought, well, that's cheap. Yeah. That's cheap. I think um, to get to the Philippines, same type of deal was going to be three times that because of the yeah. last minute you know deal but, I, I know you can get to the philippines you can get to manila at least for probably um eighteen hundred dollars or something if you schedule it in advance i'm sure it's more expensive than pre-covid but pre -COVID, you know i paid six hundred dollars yeah well i mean you know I, I figure you know the price of jet Crazy. fuel nowadays yeah. and things like that so so you when know. you got to thailand you stay in a hotel there or would you i did i went to downtown bangkok um don't know why i went downtown because i wasn't planning on doing anything yeah. anyway and which i didn't and um uh, again <laughs> another um my fault my fault so i go from the airport to my hotel i get you know i get the cab and everything don't know anything about how the cabs work there fully expecting to get ripped off you know like i'm i'm the new guy anywhere i go and i know that any country i land in i, I take a cab or whatever i'm going to be overcharged i expected it. it's fine I'm not going to get upset about it well i get in the cab and now i'm driving from you know the airport to downtown bangkok in my stupidity, not thinking, you know, uh, at first I thought I was intelligent by, by scheduling my flight to where I could get there and check into my hotel and not have to wait. Right. So you have to wait, you know, you have to like check in like after two o'clock or whatever. So, all right, the flight was like uh, landed at four. I'm, okay, that's great. Okay, four o'clock, then I'll get in a cab, by, you know, check my, or get my bags, um, get a cab by about like 5.30, which is how it worked out. Got the cab, jumped in there, um, not thinking, it's Friday, it's traffic hour, and it's Bangkok, mm. you know, so here I am in a cab for like an hour and 15 minutes, and I'm just watching the meter go tick, 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 and I thought, oh my God, another, you know, like, I'm going to have a nervous breakdown. I didn't exchange enough money. Mm. You know, I thought like, oh my God, this is, this is going to kill me. This guy's going to like yeah. take me, you know, to the bank, you know, and all that other stuff. So I finally, you know, um, the, the, and the cab driver's looking at me. He couldn't speak any English. So he goes into his Google Translate and, uh, and, he, and then he shows me and he says, he says, calm down, sir. It'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, it'll be okay until I find out what this fare is going to be. How much was it? I got there. I, I, 
with a conversion. It was like ten dollars. That's what I, I thought. Like, yeah, I was gonna say I was just there a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I had that long drive too, and yeah, it was like 45, 50 minutes, and it was ten bucks. Yeah, and it, so again, I'm, I'm getting all stressed out over nothing, you know, like, and so I thought, okay, this guy obviously did. He was not out to, you know, rob me or anything like that. So, you know, then I got there. I got to the hotel, checked in. That was fine. People were nice. Um, I did not go out and do anything, even though I was in Bangkok. There was plenty to do. Yeah, Again, you exhausted, you know. Well, I was tired, but you know, there's, you know, still, yeah. you know, when you're in an exciting place, you know, you'll go and check some things out. Not me. No chances. I'm not taking any chances. I just wanted to get here mm -hmm. and not, you know, risk something going awry. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just stayed in the hotel and I did walk around town and, and things, you know, but like I ate in the hotel, um, things like that. They had two restaurants mm -hmm. on the top floor. There was like supposed to be this really um, popular Indian restaurant. Again, not taking any chances. I'm not going to eat Indian food and then get on a flight the next day. I get sick. <laughs> very, very spicy. And, uh, you know, my, my stomach is not built for that. So, you know, I was just eating bland stuff and, um, you know, uh, ate some, you know, uh, a, a few things in their other restaurant that they had that was, uh, you know, very rice. So, so the next day you get your flight to what, Manila? Yes, went to Manila. Um, Manila, uneventful. Oh, oh, I should back up. In, in, in Thailand, while I was in Thailand, I watched, um, because I watch all, all the vloggers, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, there was a video there by, um, um, first I watched one by, uh, what was it, Mel Jean Salon? Mm -hmm. And, um, they almost got booted out of one country um, because of uh, her boyfriend's passport had a tiny tear in it. I'm looking at my passport like, oh, really? Oh, I've never heard that before. Tiny tear, tiny tear, and that was a Ko Kuala Lumpur, and they were in. so. I, I'm like, okay, let me make sure my passport is good, which is brand new, but it's still, you know, I'm looking at mine, making sure, like, okay, I want to make sure everything's good. So check that out. And then, uh, you know, again, going through more videos, um, there's another guy, another vlogger, uh, Tim K. Oh yeah, I know him. Tim K. <clears throat> well, he's been living here in the Philippines. I don't well, know how long. Time. He's got a wife and baby, everything. Yep, he's very experienced. Um, it, he's former military also. Filipino wife, um, been here for a while. They are, you know, they should know everything, right? Well, um, they went to Kuala Lumpur for vacation. Came back here to get into Manila. Manila wouldn't let him in. They booted him out. And I, I will take this. It doesn't this make in. any sense since he's married to a Filipina. He maybe didn't have his marriage license with him. Well, no, it was it was because of the requirements. And, and again, like you know, like not picking on Tim, but again, like me, he didn't do enough research. Um, in the Philippines now, for anyone that wants to know. Fully vaccinated does not mean two shots. Right. Fully vaccinated is two shots and a booster. Right. right. That's fully vaccinated, which I am. But it was enough to make me nervous. And it's you go on and, and you look at the uh, website and it's like fully vaccinated or you've got to have this and this and the antigen or the PCR test, right. you know, and I said, uh, again, not taking any chances when I got to the airport. I had my, um, I was fully vaccinated, you know, the two shots and a booster. I said, I'm getting the antigen test anyway. I'm paying the money, I'm getting the test anyway. No one asked for it, you know, it was fine. You know, the, what is it, the Phil Health, yeah, I yeah. think. Um, I went online, did all that. You upload your documents, you upload your Vax card. And uh, so when I got to Manila and I went to, um, I thought I was gonna have to show them everything, you know? And um, I just showed, they, they I, showed them my QR code yeah. for the Phil Health, and basically everything is in there already. Right. And they said, okay, you're good. See ya. Wow. And that was it. And like even the, um, then I had to go through uh, uh, the customs too and the immigration. They didn't, uh, they didn't check my bags. Maybe they x-rayed it and they decided that they didn't need to later or something, but it was a breeze going through Manila. That was a breeze. Um, that must have been like such a relief to finally set foot here. You're here, you're safe. Oh. And 
you yeah, yes country. well because manila was the culprit like two yeah. times they didn't let two different people yeah. in that i knew of experienced so, people yeah so you know like i got in and i thought oh, the, the weight of the world is off my shoulders now so now the next thing is all right i'm waiting um i've got a layover so let me go and get my phone set up so i went i had bought a phone on amazon because um old dog paul yeah, said friend. hey bring a phone from the united states it's cheaper yeah. you know get a good phone there uh, make sure it's unlocked yeah, that's good advice so i got that and and being the uh, person i am i overkilled it i bought two phones because i'm one of those people that are i'm going to drop my phone it's either going in the toilet or it's dropping on the floor i'm going to break it so i got a spare but anyway when that's i got a smart move actually you know yeah. same with, with computers you know like it's not going to go bad that phone will always be good you know yeah and, and the thing is and the good thing is though <laughs> If I, if, if I break my phone, if I drop it and break it, well, I just pull the SIM card out and I stick it in the other phone and I'm right. good. I don't have to go downtown, talk to someone and do something else, get another phone, go shopping. So I figured, you know, this is good. And it's a, it's a 5G phone, so it's gonna be good for years. Yeah. You know, so, you know, I did that. And that was an easy process, getting the SIM card. Yeah, it's easy. You know, yeah, I just asked the, uh, when I was in Manila, there's a police officer, I said, hey, where can I get a SIM card? And he said, ah, there's a, Go downstairs there's a booth down there i went down there five minutes later and paid the money and it's cheap too i had a phone yeah it was cheap it was cheap i think it was like for the plan for the whole month was like i want to say thirty dollars because i got the like i said give me all the data you can get fit in that phone or whatever you know and it, it was i want to say it was like converted to like thirty dollars you know 1500 pesos whatever it was I don't know. It, I wasn't complaining about the price. I, I know that. And so you arrive here, and, and why did you choose uh, Dumaguete? Um, because uh, Dumaguete is um, honestly, if if you if you're new to the whole, I want to go to the Philippines thing, yeah. and you're gonna go and start watching videos, and you'll you know stumble upon one vlogger, and they're gonna be from Dumaguete. Mm. And then the next one is from Dumaguete, mm. and then the next one, and there's so many, and the, you know, from what I gathered, there's such a huge community here, there is. where everyone knows each other, and, um, they're very friendly, too, the guys yeah. that come up and introduce themselves, so you made friends already, you've just been here a couple of days. Oh, yeah, I was, uh, 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 yeah, I went to, um, the, the coffee shop, and first day there, I, I, I met a guy, I'd never met him before, but, you know, sat down, we started talking, and he know, he knew you, yeah. he knew all of the, the, the popular vloggers and everything, you know, and I thought, well, this is a, I'm gonna come here for coffee every day because it's a real, Ground, Ground Zero is Ground the name Zero, of the yeah. place. And um, it was uh, like 200 meters from my hotel anyway. Didn't even realize it was there. And um, nice, clean and everything. And uh, so um, I thought, I'm gonna, you know, this could be a good routine thing. I'm gonna come here and get coffee every day. Hmm. So I came here, or I came there the next day. And the next day I meet, more people, you know, like Mark, you being one of them. Um, well, there's also Tom so, Tom's and Bo's Coffee right there, too. On the I bowl. saw that. Yeah, it's you like know, right in the corner. Check those out. So those are big hangouts, too, for, for uh, expats. Okay. You know, so well, I, maybe I'll do that just to see who I can meet up with, yeah. you know, because you know, networking is key in anything you do. It doesn't oh, it matter is, yeah. where you are, who you are. You've got a network. And, and uh, so I've, I've only been here a few days, and I've accomplished a lot. Like I went to the dentist the second day I was here. And I was, really? Yeah, I was. I, I went down to the to the mall, just poking around, and I was looking at the reviews in the mall, and it said like, "Yeah, the mall's like not." I know that dude. It's a good dentist. That's what I read. Yeah. It, someone said this is really good. The mall's not great, but great dentist. Um, and it was a uh, Ever Mall. Yeah, yeah. And so I went in there and I, I talked to him. I said, "Oh, you know, I lost a filling. I need a filling redone or refilled." Um, when can I get in? And they said, when do you want to get in? I said, soon? They said, tomorrow, 1030. So I got down there and I was a little early. I was there about 1020, you know, because I'm used yeah. to going and getting places early. Right, me too. Yeah, in the States, you better get everywhere you're going, get there early. Um, here, I guess it's a little different, but I got there at 1020 and uh, I got my filling done and I walked out of the door of the dentist at 1041. Wow. It was amazing. And then uh, what did it, cost? it was 1500 pesos, which is like $30. Wow. 
Like, you can't do that in the States. You can't get your teeth cleaned for that. Yeah, I mean, with insurance, you can't get it done for that cheap. Yeah. You know, so I thought, well, this is, this is great. I was going to get the filling done when I was in the States, but it didn't hurt, you know, or anything like that. So I was like, I'll, I'll wait till I get there. And glad that I did. You know, that was, I only spent 20 minutes in the dentist's office. So it sounds like, great. you know, things are like off to a great start for you. So far, so good. Um, went and got a scooter uh, yesterday. And how's um, that up there riding on the road there? Now you, did you say you had motorcycles back at home or? Yes, yes. I, I've had a lot of uh, motorcycles. I've rode motorcycles my whole life. You're an experienced rider then. Yeah. That um, makes a big difference. But there's, it's, it's a, there's a difference between motorcycles and now, like, I've never been on a scooter before. Mm -hmm. Huge difference. Like, you, you're looking for foot pegs. <laughs> there's no, you know, you put your feet together on this little platform and it feels odd to me. Kind of like a mini bike. Excuse me? Kind of like a mini bike. Remember yeah, that? And, but I haven't been on a mini bike since I was in my teens. Yeah. So, you know, I'm used to large motorcycles, sport bikes and, mm -hmm. and also Harleys and things like that. Um, but uh, scooter's the way to go here. It's definitely especially you know, when you first started. That's what I did. I got a scooter first. Like, yeah, I mean, and you and again, the road and get used to everything, and there's no stress, you know, where you're not shifting right. gears and clutch and and, all and, that. and you don't need you don't need that much power you know. over here. You just don't. You're not gonna, you know, if you're driving fast, um, you're you're a statistic waiting to happen. Yeah. You yeah, know, they're usually some, 35, 40 miles an hour here, which gives you plenty of time to correct when something exactly, goes wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And and. Um, yeah, so I uh, got a scooter, and I, I've got to get used to driving in uh, Dumaguete, but um, it's it's coming quicker than I thought. You know, like one one thing to know is that there are no stop signs and no stop lights, and it's a dog eat dog free for all out there. Um, I will say that you know you would think that the the, the Filipinos are they're crazy, they're aggressive, they drive crazy, but they're very, very aware yeah. of their surroundings and they know where you are, you know, and they're, they're, they're looking out. Yeah, just because of the, the chaos you and know, the nature it's, it's things. It's almost like, um, I talked about some of this a long time ago when I first came here. It's almost like they're psychic or you're psychic. Like you, you can sense what this person's doing, that person's doing. There's yeah. no like the guy to the left goes first. It's like everybody goes whenever you want to go. Right. And it's like water flowing. Yes. And you'll get to an intersection on a busy time of day, yeah. and it's just flowing through with trucks and cars. Everybody's right. going from four different directions, uh -huh. and every once in a while, you run into traffic. And when you do, you'll find out there's a traffic cop there trying to make it all work better, yeah. and he messes it up. Well, one thing that I found that, that helps a lot is, like, I use other vehicles to yeah, block, yeah. To block me. So, like, if someone, you know, uh, if I need to turn right, I look at there's a there's a truck turning right and I get on his left side and I'm you know that's like that's a good trick I do that too yeah you know like that'll that'll uh, stay alive a little bit longer than being the first one out there mm -hmm. but even then you know like everybody is really quick and ready to get on their brake because mm -hmm. there's pedestrians there's dogs there's um, vehicles you know everywhere and they're bobbing and weaving and stuff like that but uh, I saw it, a guy I saw a guy yesterday on a uh, scooter with a propane tank, a full propane tank. Wow. And he was just sitting it behind him. Yeah. Like it was a passenger balanced on the back of his seat, yeah. riding down the highway. It's not tied down in any way, shape or form, a full propane tank. He's flying on 40 miles an hour. One little bump and that thing would go yeah. off on the real the road. That's one of those but, situations where you see that and you go, okay, I'm getting ahead yeah, of him. Get away from that guy. Yeah, when that thing bounces, I don't want to be the first thing it comes into contact with, you yeah. know. Well, anyway, you know, so glad that things are working out for you and hope to have you back on the show again. Thanks for sharing your experience because there's so many guys, they're still waiting back in America, wondering like, should I go? Is it time to go? How hard is it going to be? And like you said, do your research. Yeah. You know, the, the Thai Health Pass, by the way, they've done away with that. That's no longer yeah, available. Yeah, was, I was like the last yeah. day that they had you missed it. missed about like two days. Yeah. That's a, and uh, hopefully they'll do the same thing with the one health pass in the Philippines. But yeah. right now you got to be vaccinated and boosted to come in here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and it's Did you get free, the health insurance so. too? Um, the PhilHealth? Yeah. Uh, you, the the health mean, insurance? You, I haven't. Because, because you needed that for Thailand too, didn't you? Um, I didn't know this. Oh, the, oh, you're talking about the COVID coverage. Yeah. I got the COVID coverage for Thailand, but not for here. Okay. And they never looked like maybe I was supposed to. I don't know, but maybe I didn't get any. I, I have health coverage um, through the military. I've got TRICARE. Um, but I'm yeah. sure that, you know, I have to pay everything out of pocket and then get reimbursed later. That's true with most of them, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, 
I'd say do your research and everything. Um, don't don't be like me. Wait till the last minute and do some research. Um, don't procrastinate. Yeah. I was just it was because it's a life changing event. Your life is going to be completely different if you're coming here for good. Yeah. You know, uh, which is what I did. I just jumped and and this you know I I didn't go and uh, um, come here first and check out things. I just decided this is where I'm going to go and that's what I did. A lot of so, the guys I know that did that, that's where they work out. So you got the pressure on you, like, this is real. I'm here. Yeah. This is my life now. I got to make this work. Exactly. You know, instead of like, oh, I can go home tomorrow yeah. if I want to, you know, it's like, right. you know, you're here. And the thing is, like, that is zero pressure on me to do that when I'm here. Yeah. But it's when, you know, I was back in the States, that's a heavy thing oh, weighing yeah. on your mind, that, that conscious decision, like, okay, when I pull the trigger, that's it. That's it. You know, your life has changed now forever. And when you leave the United States, you're gone. You know, it's done. I've gotten rid of every possession I've ever had. My life now fits in two suitcases and, wow. uh, and that's it. So that's, that's hard to do too. I was procrastinating with that. And then, and then, you know, COVID hit and I was stuck for two years waiting Ooh. and waiting. You know, I, luckily, luckily for me, you know, I have a very good job. And um, I was working from home for two years. It's a double-edged sword, you know, great. Everybody wants that work from home job, but no social interaction, you're bored to death. I didn't have enough work to do, which hey, I can say that now because I'm not working there anymore. Mm. But um, so I was kind of like, I felt guilty. Like I'm getting paid to do the, paid very well to do a job, but I didn't feel like, you know, I was contributing enough you know, I, I could get all my work done really quickly. And so for now, though, you're, you're totally retired now? or Yes, I'm totally retired. How old are you going to make me ask? You? Um, 58. Oh, well, you're young. 58. So, yeah, another, give me another three years and then I'll start collecting Social Security. So I'll be, you know, hmm. better off, you know, hmm. but uh, uh, I have my military retirement. So that's, that's. You're going to meet a lot of guys uh, in the military that are here, a lot of them. And I'm they, sure. they seem to be the ones that do, that do really well, I guess, because. They're used to challenges and traveling in other countries, and yeah. they seem yeah. to sort things out pretty quick. It's, it's um, I think, like, Probably the military training, introduces you to culture change. Right. And, you know, so, like, I'm not, you know, it, it doesn't uh, stress me, bother me, whatever you want to call it, to go to another country and try to communicate with people. And even if uh, they don't speak English or I don't speak their language, we'll meet somewhere in the middle. Right. But the, uh, the, 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 in the in the military will uh, get you accustomed to that, but what it doesn't do is get you accustomed to doing the travel itself, setting it up, you know, yeah, and, and you, yeah. organizing. Yeah, they do everything for you, you know. Like the the army can tell you, like, okay, we're we're flying you. You're going to Germany, and you're going to live there for three years or four years or whatever. But they do everything for you. They come and they pick up all of your your household goods, and they ship it there for you. You wow. just and uh, yeah, they pick it up, they pay for it and all that other stuff. They tell you what shots to get and where to go, be there at two o'clock Tuesday. You know, every single thing. Here's your ticket, you know, all that stuff. There's nothing to do, it's a no-brainer. And in the military, it's, it's good. they need that. They don't want military people to have to concern themselves mm -hmm. with those type of things. They want you to be focused on, you know, your job and what's in front of you and what you need to do. But then, you know, if you're accustomed to that, now, you're on your own, you've got to do all that yourself, and it's a, it's a learning curve, you know? Like, okay, you know, shipping my household goods. Um, well, that's really expensive, and where am I gonna put it? And am I gonna store it here? And how much, how much you know, like, how much would it cost to? Well, they got the ballot, bond, ballot I always pronounce it wrong, ballot buy-on boxes that are like 100 bucks. Sure. Put as much as you want, and they'll ship it, it takes like two months. Sure, a but. A lot of guys do that. But, but there's, um, there's people that are just like, hey, I've accumulated all this stuff over the last 20, 30 years of my life. I like my, my couch. I want to bring my motorcycle. I've got a classic yeah. car and things. Yeah. You can ship them here, but you need to do oh, your you, research and figure out where. A, it's a fortune to bring a car here. Oh, yeah. You, you know, you pay the tax of the whole car. Exactly. Yeah, you've got to import things. So there's, there's a lot, you know. So mm -hmm. I think the majority of people, some people do that. You know, if you've got the resources, I'm sure there's some people. It's better but, to just let go. You know, you'll find that you really don't yeah. miss this stuff once you get here. It was liberating to me to let things go. Yeah, you know? me too. I always, I had this saying that, you know, like, hey, if I haven't looked at that or seen it in five years, I don't need it. I would say that, 
but I wouldn't actually do that. Yeah. I had things in the closet and things in the attic and you know storage units, whatever, and things that I accumulated. I had I had T-shirts that were thirty years old, you know, like all this stuff. And I thought, do I really need that? No, I don't need that, you know. So I went and, um, you know, like one thing, uh, one thing. It's hard to part with, like if you're in the army, you've got all these awards and, and certificates and things like that. You gotta let them go, you know, or or photos of your children. Do you want to let that go? No, you don't. But you know what? They have a scanner. I just scanned everything. I took everything and I scanned it. And that. Well, do you have any family good. back home that could keep some things for you, or? I do, and they would have. But you know, I'm I'm not going to burden them with yeah. with that and my things. And and it's a matter of like, well, if if they're going to keep this, I'll have them keep that too. And I would have wound up trying to keep too many things, right. you know. And so I just, like I said, I I, I decided I'm going to pare it down to two suitcases, and that's what I did. Great. You know? Well, you know, I really appreciate you sharing your story with it. And, uh, sure. Hopefully we can get to be good friends and I'll see you around town. Sounds good. I'm sure we'll, we'll meet down at Ground Zero sometime. You bet. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for subscribing and uh, please share this video on Facebook. All right.